guys, Tech Valley here, and welcome to the eighth lesson of Blockstack Plus React. On the previous lesson, we worked on refactoring the logout process and creating the nav bar. In this lesson, we're going to be working on the user provider and creating a loader component. The loader component will be a strict copy and paste, and I got it from the icons8.com website. And instead of just rendering the text of loading, we're going to be rendering out a component with some styled CSS. Let's look at the code. Going back to my code base, I'm going to create a new folder in the component section called loader. And in the loader folder, I'm going to create an index.jsx. And also I'm going to create a loader.scss. And like I said before, this is going to be a strict copy and paste. So put a copy right here. And in the index, I'm going to copy and paste the component itself. And like I said before, this is a strict copy and paste that I got from the website. And to utilize this loader component, what we need to do is find where we actually are rendering the div of loading. And in this case, it will be the login component. So right here, where it says div.loading is where we want to render the loader component. So if I import loader from components loader, and right here, I could just do here. And now let's look at the browser and see what happens. Looking at our browser, we are currently signed out. And when we click the sign in with Blockstack, like before, it opens up a separate tab. But if we refer back to the first part of the tab, we'll notice that there is a loader component and it gives a little bit of a better feedback to the user that you're currently in the process of signing in. Awesome, that should be it for the loader and let's move on to the user provider. We're going to be using React's context for the user provider component. If you're unfamiliar with context, context provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down manually at every level. I believe that the user session is a good candidate for context because a lot of the actions involving getting files and writing files and reading the user data name is going to revolve around the user session. So as our app expands, it's probably going to be a better route to use context as opposed to prop drilling. Let's look at the code and see how we can make this component. What I'm gonna do first is create a user folder under components. And under the folder, I'm going to create a file called userprovider.jsx. In userprovider, we're going to import react and component from react. And we're going to export a variable called myContext and reference to react.createContext. Next, I'm going to do some boilerplate for creating class-based components. So first, I'm gonna write class, user provider, extends component, and then we'll export default user provider. I'm going to assume that this component takes one prop, which will be the user session. But before we do, I need to import prop types from prop types. And then just like before, we're going to create static prop types equal user session. And we need to create some initial state to get the user information. So we're going to use the constructor this time and initialize our state. We're going to first use the props that we get from the user session to load our user data. User data equals props.user session load user data. And load user data is a blockstack JS function that will load the current user's data. So what we want to initialize in state is get some user information that we expect to be using a lot throughout the app. And in this case, the user data, the user session, and the user name is very important. So I'm going to first nest it under current user. And then 
first key that we want to keep is the user data. Second would be the user session, the props.user session. And last is the username, which we can get from the user data. Awesome. The last thing we want to work on is the render function. And inside of this render function is where we will supply the state and the context information. So first we will say render and we will do the traditional return. And the top level component will be the my context that we created above dot provider. And inside of the provider, we're going to just reference to this.props.children. And above, we're going to give it a value. And in this case, we're going to use state and reference to this.state. With this setup, any component nested under this provider component will have access to the current user information via this.context. We're going to be testing this out in a couple lessons, but for now, I wanted to create the boilerplate and have it prepared to be utilized in the upcoming lessons. In the next lesson, we're going to be working on the initial routing using React Router. And inside of the React Router is where we're going to eventually plug in the user provider. In summary, we worked on the loader component and the user provider component via context. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see you in the next one.